following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Wednesday morning at 8.30 a.m., 60 minutes to go until the opening bell. And we got markets in positive territory to start things off after quite a slide late in the day yesterday. I got a chart of the S&Ps up there. Right now, you're trading at 28.74, 21 points in the positive. You see where we went to last night, though. The slide really begins at about whether it's 3 o'clock. You could call it 1 o'clock. You could call it 9.30 a.m., right? That's a 30-minute bar, putting things on a 15-minute. There's your acceleration yesterday. The drop out of bed really begins for the final hour. You trade from 29.10 all the way down, we reach a low at about 8 p.m. Eastern time of 28.25. You're talking about 85 S&P points, folks, from that. In, I mean, you're talking about from 3 o'clock, right, 29.10 to 28.25, 85 points. But guess what? Since then, we've traded from 28.25, and we're now 45 points above that price level. We're only 20 in the positive, but we had quite a sell-off even towards the end of the day yesterday. 28.72 right now, looking at the S&Ps. Jumping over to the NASDAQ. NASDAQ had been the strongest of the indices. I mean, check this out, right? For context-wise, when we had the run yesterday, we were really rocking right up there. The highs, 97.63. We made it up to a high of 90. Where are we? Hi, 93.45. So you're talking about almost 400 points, basically, from all-time highs. Right now, we're still above the 786, sitting at 91.59. The Dow, the laggard of the group, I mean, check out that difference when you put these indices up, right? You got the NASDAQ, we're right up there near highs. You got the Dow just struggling at 50%, actually under that 50% mark now. To check out the Dow on their action yesterday, you had the Dow trading all the way early yesterday at about 24,300. You trade down almost 1,000 points, 23,376. And since then, we've popped about 400 Dow points sitting right now at 23,726. As we come on the air, always love doing the show at 8.30 a.m. We get news, PPI coming out, falling point, excuse me, 1.3% in April versus a 0.5% drop expected. Interesting action there, producer price index falling one3 3% in April versus 0.5% drop expected. Jumping over to the charts, we'll start things off with the Dow, 23,724. NASDAQ 100, you see what we covered here, climbing higher from about the 8 p.m. lows, 9157. There's your S&Ps, 2871. Jumping over to commodities, we have the crude oil chart, $25.73 for crude. Gold catching a bid in the last few hours. You have gold trading from about just over 1700. We're now trading at 1718. Check out that acceleration to higher prices for the yellow metal. And the euro US dollar currently sitting at 10877. In terms of what else you have happening for headlines out there, now what's interesting is you're going to get uh, Chairman Powell. He is going to be speaking at an event at 9 a.m., virtual event, I believe. Let's see, they got it up here in Bloomberg I was talking about. Uh, Powell, so Federal Reserve Chairman Powell, he's going to speak at a virtual event with the Peterson Institute for International Economics in Washington at 9 a.m. Eastern Time, so 30 minutes from right now. He'll be on there. I'm sure he'll be talking about the prospect of negative rates that our president thinks should be a gift to the country. Don't think that's going to be happening from Powell anytime soon. Be interesting to see what he has to say about everything going on right now. But uh, policymakers continue to search for ways to counter the worst effects of the lockdown. One thing that has become a hot topic is negative rates, which Trump tweeted approvingly about yesterday. Powell's pushed back before, with economists expecting him to continue to prefer stimulating via the Fed's balance sheet while calling for more fiscal support. So we jump from that segue, perfect segue, into the prospect of more fiscal support. You got House Democrats out there proposing a new stimulus relief bill, includes a second round of $1,200 checks, or up to $6,000 per household sent to American families. The measure would need Republican approval to become law. Hence, that's how our government works. Um, and I don't know if that's a prospect right now. Republicans seem to want to wait and see how things go. We'll see how that works out. 
Uh, the proposal comes as the U.S. government still in the process of sending out its first round of stimulus payments authorized by Congress through the CARES Act. Those payments are for up to $1,200 an individual, $2,400 for married, $500 for children under 17. The second round of payments will be structured similarly to those first checks, $1,200 an individual, $2,400 for couples, but dependent pay would be increased to 1200 per child. The IRS of the government has made 130 million payments so far for a total of more than 200 billion, more than 150 million total payments to taxpayers are expected. So they've crushed out 130, 150 are expected. The bill from House Democrats is less generous than some of the competing proposals. So you had Camilla Harris, Bernie, Ed Markey, some of the most liberal Democrats out there introduced a bill that would give Americans $2,000 per month. Not really, oh, per month, there we go, per month during the coronavirus pandemic. But the problem with something like this, right, when does this end, folks? This is going to be a gradual recovery. Uh, it's interesting to think about there's, n there's not going to be a concrete end to this until hopefully we get a vaccine and this thing is just gone. Um, but even when that happens, right, what if businesses are out of work? Does this end? So forth. It's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. Uh, talking about PPI. So interesting that oh, I just closed it. Bummer. Uh, it was talking about. Grocery prices. I'll pull it up at the break. I had an article. I closed it by accident. It was talking about grocery prices going up at a record rate. We'll jump to that, but back to that after the break. But let's get right into some stocks with action this morning. So you have CyberArk Software. They're coming out with their earnings. 50 cents a share, beating consensus estimates of 36. Revenue also beat. CyberArk said that due to the pandemic, it's expected customers to make more cautious purchasing decisions. Withdrawing full year guidance separately, CyberRock announced an acquisition of another company for $70 million in cash. Cyber is their symbol. Got to love that symbol, right? Check out that drop, though, from about 112. They come out with their numbers at 7 a.m. this morning. Conference call beginning right when we come on the air at 104 right now for Cyber. Roku. So they filed to say that they struck a deal with J.P. Morgan and Citigroup to sell up to 4 million Class A shares, quote unquote, from time to time. The proceeds will be used for working capital and general corporate purposes. Great idea, in my opinion, folks. Um, why not file for the ability to, if you have a cash crunch with everything going on right now, to sell shares into the public to raise money? Market doesn't seem to mind. Roku up this morning from 128.20 from about 127.16. Jumping around to some of the other streamers out there. You got Netflix shares up a bit at 436.33. Disney's had some action. Disney Shanghai opening this week. You have Disney Springs, I believe, going to open a week from today. That is more of the shopping slash retail area in Disney and Orlando. Um, but Disney starting to form their own plans for how to open in the U.S. Disney Shanghai could call it a huge success. 30%. Capacity sold out in literally minutes for some days. Disney at about 105 right now, all the way from we're up to 110 at one point. Uh, and how about uh, we'll get into, yeah, Disney as well. They filed to sell 11 billion in notes of various terms with due dates ranging from 2026, so six years from right now, to 40 years from right now, 2060. Other folks, we're, we're flirting with. 0% interest rates, right? Why would you not take out money, a company like Disney, for 40 years at 2%, 3%, 4%? I'd love to see what coupons they had to pay for that. Uh, but nonetheless, Disney taking out some cash. They're sitting at about 105. And as the market charges higher, check out that acceleration on the VIX, though, folks. We went from 26 to 33 yesterday. A little bit of fear still in this market. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back to... See what else we have on tap. We'll go over groceries. If you're in the saying. CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from 30000 to 75000 the interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190.
The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, Prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 866 476 7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. We're looking at an S&P positive territory by 14 points, futures 2866. Pulling back a bit, though, in the last few minutes, we're looking at a bar. These are 15-minute bars, so the 830 bar, we came on the air, we got that PPI number. You're looking at a high bar of the index, about 2874. Dropped almost 10 points in the S&P there pretty quickly, currently sitting at about 2867. Pulled up that article we were talking about that I closed inadvertently there in the first segment. Grocery costs jumped the most in 46 years, led by rising prices for meat and eggs. I'm sure many of us have seen the grocery store over the last two months, or maybe you have somebody else in your family helping you out doing the shopping, and they've told you about it. But folks, Check out that pop for the first time. I mean, food at home prices surge. April 2020, 2.6%. You don't see prices like this move even remotely to that level. The Labor Department reported Tuesday that prices U.S. consumers paid for groceries jumped 2.6% in April, the largest one-month pop since February of 74. I was not around in February of 74, by the way. The spike in supermarket prices was broad-based and impacted items from broccoli and ham to oatmeal and tuna. Prices of meats, poultry, fish, and eggs category rose 4.3% percent fruits and veggies 1.5 percent cereals and bakery products 2.9 dairy goods 1.5 the grocery numbers stand in stark contrast to the broader trend in u.s prices falling 0.8 percent in april food price gains were robust as we know there are empty shelves out there that is one uh Chief Investment Officer writing up there, and there's your categories in terms of headline CPI, CPI minus food and energy, and then you get the food at home slash food, and check out energy, though, really bringing things down on that number, energy down about 10%. Jumping around to other stocks with action today, WW, also known as Weight Watchers, they get an initiation of coverage with a buy saying COVID-19 pandemic unlocked a durable trend in which wellness will be prioritized. I hope so, folks. Wellness should always be prioritized. If you haven't checked it out, check out Nico and Ellen every uh, Tuesday, 7 a.m. talking about your health. But you got Weight Watchers jumping from about 2348 up more than a dollar to 24.83 on that buy initiation coverage for Weight Watchers. You want to see a roller coaster ride, though, folks. Be careful in this stock. You just went from 47 down to nine dollars. 
on March 18th. We're all the way back to this morning. We're going to open just at about $25 on that stock uh, for Weight Watchers. We'll call it WW, even though uh, it's basically Weight Watchers. Twilio, the cloud communications company, power new telehealth video service from online medical search and company, booking company, ZocDoc, so T-W-L-O, telehealth. I think that's one going to be one of the big areas. Yeah, check out this pop since they came out with their earnings, folks. Um, just going to be one of the big areas, telehealth, in the future. There's no reason why sick people especially have to be assembling in one office to see the doctor. I imagine there's a lot of things that you can do remotely. And we're finding that out right now about a lot of facets of our life. But check out that rise. Even from where we were on May 6th, one week ago when they came out with their earnings, it just doesn't stop, folks. This morning, we're going to open higher at about 192 for some context. There's your action overnight. We're at 197. We're sitting about 192.51 on Twilio that the cloud, cloud communications doesn't get better. And how about this one? Uber and Grubhub. So this story breaks yesterday. Uber going after Grubhub. They're at odds over the price in a possible takeover deal. According to sources, Uber is said to be in talks to acquire Grubhub and combine the food delivery service with its own Uber Eats business. Separately, you have Uber filing to offer $750 million in senior notes that would be due in about five years, 2025. So Grubhub shares skyrocketing yesterday. Whoops, G R U B to 65-ish. We're sitting at about $60. That was from 46, quite a pop. Uh, and another article I didn't get into. It's one of the pros, but talking about $75 potentially. Barclays is looking for a price tag, and that would make sense. You're sitting at a size 65. You're at 60. The market speculation. It's at least going to be at this level. Uh, and Uber shares. They like that idea too. Pairing the gains as the market fell apart yesterday. Excuse me, Uber spiked all the way to 34.45. We finished at about 32. The market fell apart in the final hour of the trading day. Basically hit everything. There's 3 o'clock. You had Uber trading from 33.60. Overnight, we were down as about 31.60. You're going to open in positive territory with a bid ask of about 32.60 by 32.63 for Uber and Grubhub. Lyft shares, not good to be Lyft, right, to face that headwind. Uh, it's pretty tough. Those two competitors, Lyft, the smaller of the group gaining uh, more more growth for Lyft as they are a smaller company. But you, I don't know if you heard the Uber CEO last week. And one of the things they were saying is, this has been tough, but guess what? Now here, for context on the chart, you have last Wednesday, Lyft comes out with earnings. They're great. Uber trades higher on that. Uber comes out with their earnings on Thursday, continues higher on the news that maybe the worst may be over. But what's really interesting is comparing these two companies, I think they're both going to be around, all right? In the future, two, three, five years down the road, they're both going to be around. They're both going to be players in the drive sharing, um, drive hailing Uber of the world. But what's so interesting is that Uber has Uber Eats, which is just growing exponentially, and Lyft has none of that. Talk about a tough situation when all they had to do was try and put together a similar type technology. Maybe they just felt they're already too far behind Uber in that department. Nonetheless, Uber accelerating greatly at this time when everybody is ordering food takeout at a time when Lyft is just struggling. They're doing okay. Lyft actually grew their rider base year over year on their earnings. There you see the pop. So not the end of the world, right? You go from 25 to 33.58. You're back at about $30. But when I see these two companies squaring off in the exact same business, ride sharing, and then I see Uber having a monumental advantage of Uber Eats that is growing exponentially right now, it's tough to uh, be a huge bull on Lyft when Uber is in the same business and Uber is going to buy Grubhub and just dominate the food delivery business at a time when our lives are changing to be more and more used to that type of a living. So jumping back to other news stories we have going on, I believe I saw, did we get it? Where were we? Oh, I got to find the article. Shame on me. There it is. I posted it in the den. I'll grab my den link. How about that? Paul Manafort, a good day to be a Manafort. He is out of jail, folks. He, uh, he got sentenced to seven and a half years in 2019. He was scheduled to be in there until, what do they have? Yeah, November of 2024. And he is now going to serve the rest of his sentence in home confinement. Folks, I imagine that home confinement is going to be a sw pretty sweet luxury home. Uh, so Manafort got it made. Another, another Trump ally having a good week as Manafort out of jail. The other side of that, folks, 
the coronavirus deal ripping through prisons. Uh, you know, I have no problem. You, you do the crime, you do the time. All right. A lot of people are in jail for for senseless actions. I think that they should not be in jail. And when you have this type of a virus, the statistics coming out of jails, folks, as you may imagine, close quarters, all housed together are pretty stark. So hopefully communities are doing their best to get people who might not be a danger to society in any way. I'm sure we'll disagree, some of us, on whether Manafort falls under that condition. But nonetheless, interesting news to hit the wire just as we were coming on the air. 8.35 a.m. this morning, Manafort released as part of that coronavirus spread in prison, getting people out of there. Jumping back to other stocks with action this morning, Sony reported a 57% drop fourth quarter operating profit below analyst estimates. Tech giant declined to give an outlook. Not surprising there. SNE is their symbol, trading lower to 64.41. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back to finish up the program. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Mark is just hanging out for the last half hour. Keep in mind... Who do we got coming up next? Our man Larry Pezzamento, folks. And if you want some action, how about some action? Head over to the front page of TFNN. One week from tomorrow, Larry's going to be in there for an all-day event. Trade what you see, a live trading event all day. Larry's going to be in there next Thursday, May 21st, 9 a.m. till 4 p.m. 
two sessions in terms of a full morning session. There'll be a lunch. There'll be an afternoon session. Larry's going to be in there for six hours. Trading live. Hasn't done this in more than a decade. For all you old tigers out there, man, he was talking about our man Ed Young was at the last one he did probably more than 10 years ago with Tom, Ed Young. Um, great education, folks. Check that out on the front page of TFNN. At TFNN, you get a month of his newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, which starts in instantly when you sign up as well. And jumping back, remember, we got uh, some action at 9 o'clock. Larry, he's going to kick things off with Trade What You See. Uh, and what do we have? We have Chairman Powell. He's going to be talking right at 9 o'clock, not to mention the market open. We got S&Ps in positive territory. Gold catching a bid this morning, up about $13 right now at $17.20. And one of the other stores with earnings, where are we? I wanted to get to the Container Store. Reported preliminary fourth quarter results, 4.7% drop in sales, 3.6% drop in comp sales. The home organization that stores products retailer performance has been tracking its own expectations prior to the pandemic. This is an interesting one. I'm cooking a lot at home. I'm using a lot of containers, folks. But guess what? Not quite the case. This stock flirting at around $2.50 for some context here. Watch out, folks. This thing is in trouble, and I don't think that COVID is going to save it anytime soon. We'll finish it up with the VIX as we await that market open. VIX, talk about a parabolic move. But guess what, folks? Be wary. We haven't seen a bar like that. Check it out. We really haven't seen a bar like that. This, an erroneous uh, an erroneous number there, I think, an erroneous print to bring that down. We haven't seen an elevation in that VIX, potentially going back since the worst of it, right? That's a straight decline, but guess what? We had some negative action in the market yesterday. We'll see if it sticks around. Stay tuned, folks. Larry Pesavento at 9. I'll be back at 10 o'clock with Tom. Live programming all day at TFNN. We'll be right back.